Hi dear students, welcome to the next topic from uh, Laws of Motions. Uh, today we are going to see uh, two uh, angle related things. Okay, so these are the two small subtopics but which has a large applications in various problems. So let's start with the first one. First one is called angle of friction. Write on the heading angle of friction. Angle of frictions. What is called angle of frictions? Let me explain. Okay, this is a concept again. We will use it while we are doing some questions and some problems. Okay, so let's see if we have one block and it is resting on a surface and its mass is m and this will give something called action which is called its weight and opposite is called normal reaction R or N. Okay, so there is a frictional force suppose I am pulling with a force called capital F in this direction then there is a opposite frictional force will act small letter F and the frictional force is equal to the coefficient of friction is mu the frictional force is mu into n f is equal to mu n we know n is n upward minus mg is equal to zero because the block is not moving in upward directions that's what n minus mg is equal to 0 n is equal to mg we'll substitute here so that we'll get f is equal to mu mg so in short this value of f frictional force here in this case is equal to mu mg not always mu mu mg but it's always mu into n now we know this is called the reactions, normal reaction. Instead of marking normal reactions here, suppose I mark normal reactions here, both ways it is same. Then F is a frictional force, this is a vector quantity. Normal reaction is also a force that is also a vector quantity. So there are two vector quantities are acting. So what is the resultant of the two vector? These two vectors are making 90 degree each other, 90 degree. And the resultant of vector is passing like this one. This is called R vector. So, angle of frictions may be written as theta. Angle of friction theta is representing the angle between the resultant and the normal reaction. This angle is called angle of friction. It's quite simple, right? Frictional force is always opposite to the motion of a relative motion of the two bodies. Here, two bodies means one is gram and one is the mass m. I'm pushing with the or I'm pulling with the forces of capital F. The block will have something called a react. A, uh, friction force in the opposite direction of the motion so f is equal to mu mg and normal reaction is like this so these two will make a resultant force two vectors will, one is going upside one is going left side so these two will give a resultant force like this one and the resultant force makes with the normal reaction that is called angle of friction be very careful angle of friction is not the angle made with the resultant with the frictional force that is a wrong statement Angle of friction is the angle made by the resultant of the two force with the normal reaction. How to find the resultant? We know the general formula to find the resultant. A square plus B square plus 2AB cos theta. Okay. This already we have used, right? This is, this is going to find out the resultant of two vectors. If there are two vectors are there, an angle between the two vectors. Here, what are the two vectors? One is called Fe, another one is called N. Okay, N is equal to Mg, we already know. So, we'll substitute. First vector is mu Mg, that is frictional force square plus. Second vector, N square plus. 2 into, 2 into mu Mg into N into, what is the angle between them? Cos of 90 degree. So, root will expand. Cos of 90 degree. Cos of 90 means this whole factor will goes to 0. Cos 90 is 0. So the resultant value is equal to root of mu square m square g square plus n is m square g square. So which is equal to mg, m square g square taken outside. So mg in the root of mu square plus 1. This is the value of resultant. You don't want to by heart this one but understand the concept. I Just to um, derive the expressions for your understandability. So it is mu square plus 1 into mg mu square plus 1 in root and m square g square is there within root which is taken outside so it become mg just to, to know what is the called the resultant so angle of friction is always the angle between the resultant and the normal reaction and that angle is called angle of friction 
okay this is a concept some, uh, sometimes while you are uh, reading some some numerical questions you may come across some term called angle of friction sir while you see that word you have to remember okay this is an angle between normal reaction and the resultant of normal reactions with frictional force always remember that concept okay so just to uh, understand this concept uh, because this will not ask like a, a, a kind of statement based question but uh, this will becomes in between as a as a small capsule kind of model in between your uh, questions so we'll do that hope you understood what is called angle of frictions so we'll go to the next term okay so wherever you want to write the notes you can post the video and you can complete the notebook as usual but yeah so that's a concept behind here okay so we'll go and learn the next term which is called angle of repose angle of repose okay angle of repose is represented as theta r okay i will tell you what is angle of repose this will this term will also there in your question paper while the questions are asking related with friction sometimes this term will be there angle of frictions will be there angle of repose will be there do not confuse between these two these two are completely at different terms different aspects okay so we will see an example normally angle of repose is uh, used uh, with an inclined plane or it's a wedge so let me we, let me take an example will be here to describe the concept of angle of repose okay suppose this angle is called theta i don't know what is the value of this theta um, I'm, I'm assuming this angle is called theta i have placed a block whose mass is called mg then uh, we know i already mentioned this one we have a downward force called mg normal reactions like this normal reaction is always perpendicular to the surface this is a surface right for this surface the normal reactions makes 90 degrees so always paka, perpendicular so this angle is how much will come with, with respect to the triangle 90 so this how much will come this is 90 minus theta so this mg i am splitting into two components so one is along the direction and another one is perpendicular direction so these two lines must be perpendicular so mg mg into this this is something our like our our, our our previous theta so the side which is very nearer to theta is called cos theta so what this will come mg into cos of theta what is theta will be here 90 minus theta so the other side is called mg into sine of 90 minus theta our theta here is 90 minus theta that's what we have written so while we are simplifying this one what we will get will be cos 90 minus theta is sine theta so this is nothing but equal to sine theta here mg minus sine of 90 minus theta is mg cos theta so in short i am redrawing the diagrams again this is i already explained to you this is the m so this component is in short this is called mg sine theta and we have a normal reactions like this and we have an mg cos theta will be like this that's all okay so mg sine theta and mg cos theta suppose this surface is a rough surface and has a coefficient of frictions it is mu then what is called the frictional force Frictional force is equal to mu into n. n is called normal reaction. Okay. So what is the value of n will be here? If you are considering this one, in this case, you have to assume your axis like this. This is minus x, this is plus x, this is plus y, and this is minus y. Always perpendicular. So you have to, you can assume your angles are like this one. So this is minus component and this is plus. So n is plus n downward like this so which is mg cos theta the block is moving like this no it's not moving like this right so n minus mg cos theta is equal to zero normal reaction is equal to what n is equal to mg cos theta in this case case to case it will vary so n is equal to mg cos so our frictional force will be equal to mu into mg cos theta this will act in the opposite direction mg cos theta mu mg cos theta okay 
So you can note down so far uh, we have we have like normal reaction mg cos theta downward force is mg sin theta opposite force is the frictional force and uh, because of the roughness of the surfaces suppose we have a frictional force then it is mu mg cos theta okay so i need some more uh, some more spaces in the board if you have already not done you can uh, you can note this video but still i can write it here if you want to keep it here okay suppose i'm assuming the downward force downward force suppose if it is a smooth surface smooth surface means what coefficient of friction mu value equal to zero so there is no backward forces only the forward forces mg sin theta block will slide down but here due to friction mu mg cos theta will be there a backward force and the forward force is mg sin theta now i have a question to you if mg sin theta is greater than mu mg cos theta what will happen the block will move downward with a certain acceleration if mg sin theta is equal to mu mg cos theta then what will happen the block will not move the block will rest that is important for us so the block is rest which means i can say acceleration is equal to zero acceleration is equal to zero means what body in rest body in rest positions at what conditions mg sin theta is equal to mu mg cos theta mg mg get cancelled so i can say mu equal to tan theta at this stage at this stage this is a rest position in that cases the condition is like our theta is called when body is in rest rest irundana that theta is called theta r that theta is during that time the value of theta is called angle of repose so i can represent theta r i can represent theta r i can represent theta r so mu is equal to tan theta r now can you define what is called angle of repose question is simple angle of repose is an inclined plane angle correct i am giving you a concept not a framed sentence angle of repose is an inclined plane angle at which the block resting on the inclined plane is at rest it is not moving so which means in order to block the movement of in order to block the movement of the block to downward the coefficient of friction value mu is equal to tan times of theta r for example if theta equal to 45 degree then what is tan 45 will come tan 45 is 1 so the coefficient of friction value must be 1 in order to prevent the motion of the block which means angle of repose is the angle at which the block is at rest for all other angles if the block is at not rest for all other angles what i can say that that is not called angle of repose that is simply called angle of inclination <coughs> okay that is something called angle of inclinations so whenever um, if our angle this theta value suppose you are assuming this theta equal to 30 degree and this theta will be this theta r will be equal to <coughs> theta r theta r value will give what called coefficient of friction suppose my a uh, theta value is 30 degree and a theta r value is suppose two values will be given theta is equal to 30 degree theta r will be equal to 60 degree so which one will be higher theta is lesser than theta r correct so theta r will be the highest value so highest value means higher the coefficient of frictions okay higher the coefficient of frictions so whenever theta r value higher than theta value block will never falls down block will never go down which means angle of repose will decide whether the block has to move down or block has to stop it if the given value if the given angle is less than angle of repose then block will never move down if the given value is higher than an angle of repose means reposing means pause pause means stopping okay repose means again again pausing pausing it actually 
So whether I have to say theta r is higher means it will pause. If theta r is lesser means it will not pause in very short. So we will write a couple of sentences will be here in order to understand this concept very well. Okay. Okay. So we'll define the angle of repose and other stuff. We'll write few points will be here. The first point angle of repose. Angle of repose. Is the angle is the angle at which is the angle at which they block the block in an in an inclined plane in an inclined plane will not move will not move means what is the value of accelerations will not move which means acceleration is equal to zero will not move okay so next one when the angle of inclination when the angle of inclination inclinations means the wedge angle theta in bracket we will draw a small diagram for our understandability this is called theta when the angle of inclination theta is greater than theta r when the angle of inclination is this theta value, theta r and theta value, two different things which will give you in the question. If it is greater than theta r, then the block, then the block moves with an acceleration. With, with an acceleration, which means A is not equal to zero. In the third point, when, <coughs> when the angle of inclination when the angle of inclination theta we, we already know what is called a theta is less than theta r is less than theta r angle of repose then the block then the block will not move the block will not move which means that what acceleration is equal to zero understand these three points these are important. So when the angle of repose is the angle at which the block is in an inclined plane will not move. That is called angle of repose. If angle of repose is greater than uh, angle of repose is greater and angle of inclination, then block will not move. If angle of repose is lesser and the inclination angle is higher, then the blocks will move with the, a certain accelerations. <coughs> okay. So if uh, in this cases, in this cases, what is the formula we can write? Mg. Uh, we know uh, this is an inclined plane in an inclined plane the, okay in an in an inclined plane two forces will be here this is called mg sin theta and opposite forces is called mu mg cos theta acceleration is downward i told you upward is positive upward is positive means mu mg cos theta upward positive downward minus total force is equal to mg sin theta is equal to ma acceleration downward so it is negative minus ma sign convention now if you throw out multiplying with minus we will got mg <coughs> sin theta minus mu mg cos theta is equal to ma this is at what conditions accelerations will be there so this will happen at a conditions when theta is greater than theta r during the condition this is possible when theta is greater than theta r, the block will move with a certain certain kind of acceleration. That's what we have written. Okay. So, hope you understood these three points. And the three points are available on your notebook mandatorily. Okay. So, angle of repose and angle of inclination. Sir. Two terms we have learned uh, in the today's session. Sir. And this angle of repose and angle of inclinations will not ask you like a theoretical question. The theoretical questions might be coming for your school examinations, sir. School board examination, theoretical examination. This might be come. Hi. So last session we have learned about uh, uh, different concepts uh, involving free body diagram and uh, various examples uh, which are uh, uh, related with the free body diagram. And there are a couple of terms, angle of repose and angle of frictions. Okay. So this angle of repose and angle of frictions will be comes in between the questions, not as like that will, will not come as a question or a problem. But yeah, it will be an intervening uh, part uh, in your question. One second. Okay, fine. So 
here now we are going to learn about a very interesting concept which is called stacked body uh, i have given you already an introductions about stacked bodies but now we are learning it in a very depth way about this stacked bodies okay so write out the heading stacked bodies so far we have learned about the stacked bodies without frictions now we are going to learn this is with friction okay so stacked bodies um, in a very simple way in a short way one body is placed on top of that another body is placed that is simply called stacked bodies i will take an example here and based on that example i will describe the concept for you okay so i will take a question a real time question i am going to take it will be here and based on that question three concept i will describe so you you have to remember or you have to know like a three concept i am saying which means you will get a three questions so there are three questions will three type or three models of questions will come from this topic not more than that not less than that three chances are there so we will see all the three chances of asking the questions by taking one question as an example so we will change certain values in that questions and we will see how these things are moving okay so we'll take one example of connected bodies <laughs> i have a 10 kg block on top of that i have a 5 kg block so this is resting on a surface and the coefficient of friction in this surface mu equal to 0.1 and the frictions between 10 kg and 5 kg this is mu equal to 0.2 okay so i am pulling with a force called f okay we will handle different questions sir. you can note down this diagram on your notebook uh, so we will see like uh, different questions the first question so i will uh, i will describe one by one cases then we will see how it is coming first one what is the what is the maximum force maximum force which is f can apply can apply this is one situation i'm telling can apply to move the blocks together to move the blocks together to move the blocks together this is a question which means i have two blocks will be here 10 kg and 5 kg so what i am going to do will be here so in this diagram the two blocks 10 kg and 5 kg 10 kg and 5 kg blocks i am applying a force on lower block f this force can apply will be here also we will see in another example that cases so what is the maximum force f i can apply so that 10 kg and 5 kg blocks will move together which means they are not separated in order to move these two blocks together what is the minimum conditions both will move with the same speed or i can say same acceleration whenever there is a change in accelerations are happens what will happen the blocks are get separated so we have to draw the free body diagram in this case okay so what we will do means first <coughs> while you get a questions like this maximum force can apply to move these blocks together first case you have to draw the free body diagram of 5 kg blocks 5 kg blocks will draw so we have a 5 kg blocks and uh, this will have a frictional forces now uh, this f is moving uh, in this direction correct so the lower surface will have one frictional force in opposite direction and here also one frictional force for 10 kg in opposite direction because the movement of 10 kg block is along the direction along left to right so two frictional force will act in opposite direction one here and one here but for 5 kg 5 kg i am not applying any forces but some forces will hold it and keep it on 10 kg block so that it will move forward what force will keep it make it forward in the direction that is called frictional force so here one frictional force will be here okay that frictional force is nothing called f small letter f okay so 
uh, small letter f so f will be equal to mu into normal reaction here this is called weight mg and here this is called normal reactions n will be here in this case i'm giving n1 first block null meaning so n1 so what will happen f will be equal to coefficient of friction is 0 0.2 0 0.2 into n1 is mg so which is equal to 0 0.2 into 5 into 10 how much it will come it is 2 into 5 10 so 10 newton is the frictional force so here i'm going to give you some information what's the maximum force i can apply so that the two blocks will be moving together so 10 newton is the forces is coming will be here so for this block acceleration is equal to one force and one mass force by mass what is force what is mass 5 kilogram so what is accelerations it is 2 meter per second square this is the maximum acceleration this is called the maximum acceleration this block can give have an maximum accelerations of 2 meter per second square to have the maximum acceleration this mu is called water this friction force is called limiting friction limiting frictions limiting frictions divided by mass we are applied and we got to 2 meter per second square which means the block can move maximum maximum frictional force is called maximum limiting friction so with that limiting frictions the block can move with a maximum acceleration of how much 2 meter per second square so i just cleared the board and now uh, i will have enough spaces will be here so i will draw the diagram of uh, the 10 kg blocks the free body diagram of 10 kg so hope free body diagram of 10 kilograms okay here there is a frictional force will be here which i am giving f1 here also one frictional force which i am giving f2 here we have an right side force f here what we can say mu into n2 here what 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 i can say mu into n1 this frictional force value value already we have found from the 5 kilogram free body diagram what is the value of this one what is the value of this one this is 10 already we have calculated right okay and here is mu to n2 here we have a force called 5g because it's a contact force from 5 kilogram and here it is 10g and here it is reactions n2 so mu into n2 mu is how much will be here 0 0.1 will be here so 0 0.1 into n2 is 15 times of g which is equal to how much 15 will come okay now we will apply right side force acceleration is in this direction total force f minus left 10 minus 15 is equal to 10 times of a so f is equal to 25 plus 10 into acceleration is 2 that is a maximum accelerations and we got which is equal to 45 newton so 45 newton is the maximum force in which i can apply so that what will happen so that I will get a these two blocks will move with a maximum acceleration of 2 meter per second square so I have a different ranges right so maximum I can apply what is the minimum value I can apply see minimum minimum will be this is the frictional force is coming because of the interference with another bodies but here the frictional forces are coming between the surface so the surface is actually blocking it so surface will be giving a value will be equal to 15 value will be equal to 15 so i can say i can say 15 the lower frictional value 15 less than or equal to f less than or equal to 45 newton if this conditions are applies what will happens the blocks moves together blocks moves together block blocks moves together <coughs> so if you have applied a, a 45 newton blocks will move with a, a maximum accelerations with a common accelerations both the blocks will get moved yeah, with the maximum accelerations but if uh, if it is 45 if it is less than less than less than that means block will also move with a lesser value of accelerations now what will happens if you are giving a force less than 50 newton less than 50 newton means the blocks will not get moved so we will go ahead with this concepts will be here so we know maximum force i can apply to the block is 45 newton and the minimum force is the lower frictional force which is called 15 newton with the help of 15 newton and with the help of 45 newton so the blocks blocks two blocks can move 
together if the forces are between the ranges now we based on the concept now we know up to maximum 45 i can give it now there are three different cases will be here we will see so in case number one first case we will see if f is equal to 10 newton so what what we will do this is our 10 kilogram blocks this is our 5 kilogram blocks and this is a surface and which is giving a force of is equal to 10 newton here friction mu equal to 0 0.2 here frictions mu is equal to 0 0.1 now 10 newton is given 10 newton is given means with respect to the 10 newtons i know the forces are less than 50 newton minimum 50 newton is enough so that the block will start its motions so here the lower frictional force will equal to 50 newton which means my applied force are less than the frictional forces so the blocks will not move in that cases this body i'm considering as m1 body and this body is considered as m2 so a1 is equal to 0 comma a2 is equal to or i can say a1 is equal to a2 is equal to 0 both blocks will not have any acceleration because i told i can give maximum 45 minimum value minimum frictional force for the lower half not not from the upper half because upper half is given by the 5g so the lower blocks will be there 15 so anything greater than 15 only the stories will happen which, which means the blocks will start to move with the certain accelerations but uh, what will happen if the forces are less than less than 15 newtons blocks will not get moved this is one case now we'll see another case now i know if it is at 45 newton force if i'm giving maximum 45 newton i will get a maximum acceleration of how much i will get a maximum acceleration of how much two meter per second square now if i'm giving something like some 30 meter per second a 30 newton force will be here 30 newton means that is comes in between 15 and 45 but in that cases also i am sure that is within the range and the blocks will move together with 2 meter per second square is a wrong statement it will not move with 2 meter per second square 2 meter per second square it will move only if the force will be equal to 45 newton now force is not 45 newton so some value will be less than that we will see that so case number one is over so we'll move to case number two so case two the second case is specifying my applied force same diagram same blocks same diagram 10 kg and here we have 5 kg this is called m1 and this is called m2 and this is pushed with the forces equal to 30 newtons with a 30 newton and here mu equal to 0 0.2 and here mu equal to 0 0.1 so what will happen we know now two blocks will be moved but with a common accelerations so for 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 the, for the, for the first block for the five kilogram blocks i know the frictional force are acting in this directions f because of the frictional force only this will have a grip and this is moving together and this frictional force will be equal to ma ma means y 5a ma means 5a okay a is equal to 2 meter per second square when force will be equal to 45 newton this is not 45 so a is not a 2 meter per second square i cannot do like that i cannot substitute 2 will be here because my force is not 45 newton now f is equal to 5a now we'll draw the second body diagram is 10 kg will be here and we have one friction uh, on the top side force will be equal to 13 and we have a reverse force and two reverse forces will be here and we 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 have two reverse forces are available and one reverse force will be equal to this multiplied with this one and this multiplied with this one so this force is f this is in this direction okay and v half will be equal to mu n2 will be here in the in the lower surface we have a frictional force will be here so what is the value of that frictional force that frictional force the value of this frictional force is equal to 0.1 so f maybe i'll give it as f1 and f i will give like this so what will happen in this cases so here if i'm writing an equation 30 minus f minus f1 will be equal to 10 times of a this is equation number two i am giving this is equation number one i am giving so two forces will be here okay so here f1 
f1 is equal to how to find out f1 f1 equal to mu times of n2 so f1 value i can calculate f1 value is 0.1 is the lower half the coefficient of frictions 0.1 into n2 n2 means what 10 plus 15 g this is what we have learned just before right 15 g so how much of this forces will come it this will becomes as 15 so i am substituting here 30 minus instead of f i am substituting 5a instead of this lower f1 i am substituting the value is equal to 15 is equal to 10 a so what will happen 30 minus 15 is 15 is equal to minus 5a taken to right side 15 a and a will be equal to 15 by 15 which is equal to 1 meter per second square it is 1 meter per second square accelerations these two blocks will move together these two blocks will move together with an acceleration of 1 meter per second square earlier we got 2 meter per second square during that time what is applied force will be here 45 now our force will be equal to 30 so 40, uh, 30 means less force of course acceleration will be lesser that acceleration's value will be equal to 1 meter per second square hope you got my points now case 1 and case 2 now we have a range right 15 less than or equal to capital f less than or equal to 45 we have seen two ranges one range we have seen like 10 newton what will happen next we have seen 30 newton what will happen in between we are going to see another case 60 newton what will happen if it is 60 newton forces if you are giving to a body what will happen both blocks will get splitted splitted means 10 kg blocks if i am pushing with a 60 newton force it is moving right and the 5 kg blocks will move left side this is what is going to happen so will be there so if i am giving 60 newton forces we will draw the diagram and we will see that is our case number three okay so three ranges we have seen so 10 we have seen 10 no accelerations both blocks are at rest when it is 30 newtons both blocks will be moves with a common acceleration of 1 meter per second square and the last part will be here is equal to case 3 our third case so we have again a 10 kg block here we have again a 5 kg blocks which is on the surface here friction mu equal to 0.1 friction mu equal to 0.2 this is called our m1 body and this is called our m2 body we are pushing with a forces equal to 60 newton what will happen to this one we'll draw the 5 kilogram blocks 5 kilogram blocks will be here and frictional force will be here see 60 newton is pushing like this one so if it is moving like this one 5 kg will move backward so the frictional force is in this direction so this frictional force will be equal to mu times of n1 okay mu times of n1 so this is one frictional force so we know both blocks will be moved separately so this is the free body fbd of 5 kilogram we'll write it then we'll substitute later next one fbd of 10 kg will draw fbd of 10 kg so 10 kg will be here a force will be equal to 60 newton will be here and here this same frictional force will be here here also the same frictional force what is the value of this one mu times of n1 what is the value of mu 0 0.2 what is n1 5g okay so 5 into 2 okay 0 0.2 2 into 5 10 newton is in this direction so this f is equal to 10 newton and here we have 0.1 into n2 n2 is 15 times of g so 15 times of g means 0.1 into 15 which is equal to 15 so 15 newton so here we, we know this is moving with an acceleration of a1 this is moving with an acceleration of a2 because now both blocks will get slipped out because my force is greater than 60 newton so i have to find out actually so total force in this direction f is equal to ma ma means 5 a1 what is the total force will be here 10 10 will be equal to 5 a1 a1 will be equal to 10 by 5 which is equal to 2 meter per second square upper block will move with a speed of 2 meter per second square we'll go to the lower block so total force 60 minus 10 15 total is 25 is equal to m2a m2 means 
10 10 into a2 second body second body in the acceleration say to 60 minus 25 60 minus 20 40 again it is 35 so 35 divided by 10 which is equal to a2 which means 3.5 meter per second square the lower block will move so the lower block can move with an accelerations of 3.5 meter per second square towards the right and the low this upper block will move with an acceleration of 10 meter per second square towards left okay so the acceleration uh, and these two blocks which are moving uh, in the directions and here as per the sign conventions we are just marked as a1 and a2 so both blocks can move and the both blocks will be moving with a different accelerations okay whenever the forces are greater than a certain value one blocks will move with a speed of 2 meter per second square another blocks will move with a 3.5 meter per second square so i will summarize it now you have to look into your notebook okay now what concept we have learned first first of all we have learned the stacked body concepts with a diagram the diagrams will will contains a 10 kilogram blocks and a 5 kilogram blocks you can see on your notebook also similar to this one right so 5 kilogram 10 kilogram and frictional forces are exist between these two bodies 0.1 and 0.2 so my aim is to find out what is the maximum force i can apply on the block so that both the blocks are moved together that value we have found out as a first instance there we say we got it as 45 newton and if you are applying maximum force of 45 newton the blocks will not get separated both blocks will move together with an acceleration of 2 meter per second square we got a conclusion so 45 second square is the upper border i can go so what is the minimum force i have to apply so that the block will start to move that is just slightly greater than that of the lower block friction lower block frictions will have a point uh, sorry 15 g sorry 15 newton force will be here so our force should be slightly greater than 15 or 15.1 is enough so in short we'll write 15 to 45 if you are giving a force both blocks will move together okay if you are giving a force less than 15 newton the blocks will not not at all move it will be at rest so if you are giving a force equal to 10 newton what we have seen is like both the blocks will move without any axle both blocks will not move and no acceleration which is zero meter per second square now we have seen we have taken a value in between these two ranges which is called a 30 meter per 30 newton force we have taken so definitely we know 30 newton is greater than 15 but less than 45 so these two blocks will move but is it move with a 2 meter per second square no to move with the 2 meter per second square we need to apply 45 newton forces so we are not applied 45 newton our forces are less than that so the blocks will not move the blocks will move but will not move with a speed of 2 meter per second square it will move something less than that so that value we have calculated and whose value we, we, we got it as 1 meter per second square in case 2 case 3 okay in case 3 we know we are applying a, a higher value which is equal to 60 newton definitely both blocks will get separated okay uh, both blocks will not move together it will be get separated both blocks will be moving with a different accelerations so we have drawn the free body diagram of the first block and second block and we 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 know it will move separately so we are assumed an accelerations of a1 and a2 separately and we have solved the equations and we got a1 will move with an accelerations of 2 meter per second square when it get separated and a2 will be moves with a speed of 3.5 meter per second square so we got a1 will move with a speed of 2 meter per second square and a2 will move with a speed of 3.5 meter per second square which means both bodies will have different value of accelerations this is a one cases we have seen it now and this is we are applying the forces on the lower block and we have a separate cases if the forces are applied on an upper block what will happens there also you can draw the situations but let me explain one concept will be here also so additionally i am giving you one bonus point listen here because of the 15 newton will be here i got the lower limit as 15 newton correct 
upper limit is the maximum force I calculated which is 45 Newton I have done it in previously but the lower limit is 50 Newton suppose if the coefficient of friction given to you in the question is 0 then what is your this value will come this value is equal to here you will multiply it with the 0 and your answer will got 0 in that cases your lower limit will be 0 your lower limit will be 0 so your lower limit is always decided by this surface frictional value if there is no surface frictional value is not given your lower limit will be equal to 0 that's all okay so just remember that point while you are answering it do not get confused okay so this is a concept uh, i try to give to you next we will see one another examples okay one 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 another example now now what we are going to do now if capital f is applied f is applied at the top at the top okay for example for example let me take an example we have a five we have a 10 kilogram and we have a five kilogram we can do the same same stuff with the same examples here we are applying a force equal to f here i am saying this is equal to 0.2 and here it is smooth surface here i am saying mu is equal to zero so here i am asking you the question the same way what is the maximum f can apply can apply so that so that both blocks both blocks moves together both blocks moves together so what we'll do we'll draw the free body diagram of five kilogram first so we know five kilogram capital f is applied so we are trying so he now in this case the motion is in backward directions so this is mu mg you know it is called mu mg mu is 0.1 into 5g so which is equal to 5 newton so we'll apply capital f minus 5 is equal to 5 times of a capital f is equal to 5 uh, f f minus 5 is equal to 5 a so f will be equal okay so uh, f minus 5 is equal to 5 a we need to find out the value of f that is our assumption right we'll keep it here equation number one this is for 5 kg we'll draw the free body diagram of 10 kg also okay so 10 kg 10 kg there is no force in the lower half because the frictional coefficient is equal to zero now i want both blocks moves together so this frictional force for 10 kg will act left or right right because this frictional force is allow this body to move right side so this is actually my frictional force and this will move with an acceleration is equal to a so what is the frictional force value we, we already got it is called 5 so 5 is equal to m a m a means 10 a a will be equal to 5 by 10 which is equal to 1 by 2 meter per second square 1 by 2 meter per second square now we know it is 1 by 2 meter per second square we'll substitute here so what we'll get f minus 5 is equal to 5 by 2 f is equal 5 by 2 is 2.5 2.5 plus 5 7.5 newton so which means if i'm applying a force of 7.5 newton the blocks will move together blocks will move together what is the minimum value and what is the maximum value here there is no friction we we we, we don't want to consider but is what what is the lower value 5 newton so i can say 5 less than or equal to f less than or equal to 7.5 newton if i apply the blocks will move together the blocks will move together with an x if it is 7.5 newton maximum acceleration so here if it is uh, in between these range in between these range the acceleration value is less than 0 0.5 meter per second square when it is at 7.5 acceleration is 0 0.5 meter per second square between the range acceleration is 0 0.5 when when it is less than this value then acceleration is equal to zero which means if i am applying a force equal to 4 newton if i am applying a force equal to 4 newton 
4 newton is sufficient 4 newtons 4 newton will be here already you have will be here how much 5 so backward force will be higher limiting frictions will be here so limiting friction now converted into static friction static frictions become 4 because applied forces and reverse forces are makes equal by static friction by reducing the limiting friction so if your force will be less than 5 5 newton no acceleration if your forces are greater than 5 newton or less than 7.5 newton your acceleration should have a value but that value is less than 0.5 meter per second square but if you are applying a force is greater than 7.5 newton both blocks will get separated and will move with a separate accelerations okay this was the concept behind it now so we know we know what is the maximum force here also we are going to see like the three different cases what we what we have seen before so case one okay case number one f is equal to four newton i know f is equal to four newton means this is m1 body this is m2 body so a1 is equal to zero and a2 will be equal to zero first case is over next one case two case two f is equal to 7.5 to 6 newton we'll, we'll take an intermediate value then we'll see what will happens now now we'll draw the diagram now this is 5 kilogram we'll apply force is equal to 6 newton we have another blocks will be here 10 kilogram okay so for the first blocks we'll draw the free body diagram here there is no friction sir so this is for a 5 kilogram blocks we know it is 6 newton and backward force mu mg mu mg what is the mu mg value 5 newtons okay so we'll write mu mg which is equal to 5 okay so this will move, move has to move with an accelerations of a okay so we know 6 minus 5 is equal to ma which is equal to 5a 6 minus 5 means 1 1 divided by 5 is equal to a which is equal to 0 0.2 meter per second square so 0 0.2 meter per second accelerations of the two blocks okay so 6 newton 6 newtons are false in between these two so i know the value is less than 0 0.5 so i got 0 0.2 which means a both blocks will move with an acceleration of 0 0.2 meter per second square so this is what case this is our case number two so case number one case number one f four newton okay case number two is already written here case number two f is equal to six newton now we are going to see our third case third case means what i have to apply force greater than 4.7.5 newton in that case is what will happen both blocks will move with the separate accelerations so let's see case number three i am applying a force f is equal to 10 newton so we'll draw five kilogram blocks will be here this will be applied 10 newton this will be backside five accelerations a okay so 10 minus 5 is equal to 5a a is equal to 5 by okay 10 minus 5 is 5 5 by 5 is equal to 1 meter per second square the lower the upper block is moving with an accelerations of a1 now we'll draw the 10 kilogram blocks diagram so 10 kilogram will be here and because of this applied forces these blocks will move forward and there is uh, the the second blocks will be here m2 correct so this m2 has to be moved with a certain because of the frictional force value so here f is equal to 10 a 10 acceleration what is the what uh, what is the frictional force which is applying will be here it is called phi because of this phi only this can move because here we are not applying any forces only this force is converted and here will be comes as a frictional force and because of the frictional force only this block can move in forward direction or backward directions okay so if yeah if you're folding one body like this the upper blocks will move in a backward direction so f is equal to 10 times of a so a is equal to 5 by 10 which is equal to 1 by 2 which is equal to 0 0.5 meter per second square which means two blocks will be here the upper blocks will move with a speed of 1 meter per second square and the lower blocks will move with a speed of 0.5 meter meter per second square if i'm applying a force is equal to 10 newton which is greater than the range so i know the accelerations is greater than 0.5 maximum 0.5 will come but beyond that here you can see it's beyond that so 1 meter per second square it is 0.5 meter per second square if it is 7.5 both blocks will move with a speed of 
0.5 meter per second square if it is less than 5 newton 4 newton both blocks will not have any accelerations understand the concept huh? always i am telling this this kind of question this kind of question students are feel more difficult in loss of motion in 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 loss of motions, if you are taking the complete chapter, the entire chapter, we are almost approaching the end. 80% of the chapter is over. So we are almost approaching the end. So while, while you are taking the complete loss of motions questions, this kind of model of questions, students will feel difficult. Lots of books, there are certain reference books, there are some, uh, some way the, in which the problems or approaches will be get confused. While you are reading maybe different multiple books so i strongly recommend you to stick to certain books and follow that but this is quite important okay this is a kind of your rank deciding question most of the students make this questions to this kind of this model of questions whatever whatever i teach you we will do this kind of questions definitely while we are doing the questions practicing i mean the classroom discussions questions we will do this one but i am saying this is the this kind of model of questions uh, students are always making mistakes or wrong answer and getting a negative marks so be very vigilant and try to learn the real concept in a thorough way so that when you see some questions uh, you are able to apply your different concepts okay so understand it very well and learn this concept uh, repeatedly this is the a difficult area in the chapter mostly students are facing that is lack of concepts okay so hope you understood this area